what is going on youtube welcome back to the channel today we got my boy here john you get okay chilling, chilling, chilling. Uh, this guy here bro <laughs> so my boy is running the frenchy fab single turbo kit so let me show you guys that real quick all right guys so this is his 2009 e90 um like i said he's running the frenchy fab single turbo kit so this is the oem manifold style so if you guys can see it down there also running the hood dump and this is a pulsar gt3584 beautiful setup he has going on here with the colors and then he also did his um his own ram intake on the headlight which is pretty cool um the new one that i'm working on with the carbon fiber air duct or whatever he's gonna be getting that once i finish that so good all right guys so welcome today's today's well ugh, sorry welcome to today's video um what we're gonna be doing today is john just drove all the way up from the new york so he had about two and a half hour drive he just got here so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be deleting that so he has it looks like two warm clamps on there on a coupler to a charge pipe and to the to the throttle body but um, that keeps popping off, obviously, because it's the wrong design, and that's not what it's supposed to be. So what we're going to be doing is I have a new product that I'm releasing. So we're going to be welding one, two, three. We're going to be welding three H clamps, um, HD clamps. So let me get those real quick and show it to you guys. All right, guys. So these are the clamps we're going to be welding on. Um, these are my new product that I'm releasing. These are Frenchy Fab HD um, boost clamps so i have these available in three inch and two and a half inch they also have the quick release pin style so you just push that pin in and then pop it out so what we're going to be doing is he's going to be getting these in black but i do have them in red and red shows up a lot better on camera so that's why i'm showing you guys that but these are going to be going in place of that charge pipe right there um, i'm going to be welding one flange onto the throttle body and the other flange is going to be welding onto the charge pipe He's also gonna go ahead and weld the same clamp, but on the turbo. So we're gonna weld one to the turbo, onto the hot side charge pipe. And we're also gonna weld from the hot side charge pipe to the inner core. So we're gonna show you guys all that now. Um, you excited, my boy? Oh, hell yeah. Yes, sir. Dude, this thing sounds so good, though. How's she running, good? Besides the transmission, though, you know the all-wheel drive system is not, it's not working. Yeah. Because the traffic case right now is giving problems, but okay. besides that, She's running on 14 psi, 15 psi, not, not even 20, and that's. You see how she sounds. Yeah, she sounds good. Wow. So it, I, it sounds, it sounds like you're, you're ready to get with Joshua, right, yeah. for that 6 HP 28. Man, I'm getting ready. Yes, man, sir. Man, put money on the side. Yes, Seven sir. Seven grand, though, but. Yep, <laughs> yep. For, for those of you having transmission issues or whatever, I'm telling you, get with Joshua, get on that oh, 6 man. HP 28. So for us, all with drive guys is gonna be 6 HP 28 X. But if you're real with drives, it's going to be 6 HP 28. Hellcat killer. Get on that. Yeah, get on Hellcat that train, dog. Killer. Get on that train. He said, Hellcat killer. What's up, baby? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we got the fan on there. We're pulling out the engine. That way we don't have a hot engine to stick our hands in. Let's check out these tires, dog, because these tires are meaty. 225. Look at that. 275s. Got needles, 555Rs. All right, you guys, so while the car is cooling down, I just wanted to show you guys the clamps a little bit better. So, like I said, we do have it in red and black available. They do have the French Fab logo. They are aluminum. And they have the recessed lip on there, so your three inch pipe can fit inside. And I do have two and a half inch available as well. But let me put you guys on my stand. Bear with me, let to set you guys up. All right, so now let me just show you guys how they come apart. So, like I said, you do have the quick release, push the pin in and pop out. They have detent ball pins. You push the pin and the balls fall in. They are just like the vibrant HD clamps. You open them up. Maybe a two-piece clamp design. 
and you have your ceiling ring, and you have your two flanges. So like I said, they do have the lip, so your three inch pipe sits inside, and you can get a nice clean weld. You do have to clean these out, because you know, obviously they have machining oil and stuff like that uh, to prevent corrosion, but they have the lip inside. They do come with the two O-rings, so it's just as easy as putting the O-ring on one side and just rolling it on. Um, I highly recommend to put some O-ring lubricant. That way you don't pinch and rip the O-ring accidentally during install. So once you have your O-rings and everything installed on your clamps, um, it's going to be a very tight fit to get them, put them inside the sleeve, the ceiling sleeve. Um, it's going to be a tight fit because obviously, you know, it needs to seal the boost. So put your lubricant on there, put a little bit of lubricant on here as well. And when you put them in, try to like spin them. That way you don't slice or cut your o-ring and then you have leak issues your boost leak issues um, a lot of people don't know how to install these properly um, there is a tool that you can get for these it's a spacer clamp um, I believe the the vibrant the vibrant spacer clamp works on these as well so what it is basically just a v-band clamp um, just like if you had a, a v-band let me see if I have one so it's something like this. I don't have the tool myself, not yet at least, but it's basically a clamp, but um, it's a special clamp. So what it is, is it has a lip inside that when these sit, it spaces out, I believe it's a, a 16th or something like that, or a quarter inch. So it's basically gonna gap like this. You're gonna clamp that on, and then that's gonna give you your proper distance on whatever material that you're welding. Um, the reason that's for is because the good thing about HD clamps is it allows flexibility and it's not 100% rigid. You don't want it to be 100% rigid because remember, your motor does move under load. Your intercooler is bolted down, supposed to be solid. So you can actually end up cracking pipes or stuff like that, which is the reason we use silicone couplers. The silicone couplers allow you for movement, flexibility, so you don't crack. But the bad thing about silicone couplers is, especially in the BMWs, is we have no space inside the engine bay. So heat is our enemy and um, after time, you know, your silicone couplers, they do start to deteriorate and fail. So going with a more bulletproof style, um, the HD clamp style is the only failure rate that you're looking for is um, usually just an O-ring failure. Um, unless you have a bad welder, maybe, you know, got some bad welds and it's leaking out the welds. But um, typically the only failure for HD clamps is just, you know, after time, your O-rings do, do go bad, you know, um, heat and everything is still there and O-rings do get flat spots after so many heat cycles and stuff like that. So it's just a matter of, you saw how easy it was to put it on and take it off. Just take the clamp off, replace the O-ring, put your lubricant, put it back together. Boost leak fixed. So this is not something that's 100% necessary. Um, it is a good upgrade for like the throttle body to the charge pipe because the factory, um, the factory clamping style with the C-clip, um, depending on where you get your your charge pipe from and stuff like that either the machine work on the factory clamp could be good or it could be sloppy so me personally i'm not you know i'm not trying to bash anybody um i ordered my hks blow off valve through um vrsf and it came with their pipe as well unfortunately the c-clip style to the throttle body was super loose and um anytime i would try to hit boost it would just pop off the C-clip and everything was perfectly seated. The O-ring was in there. Everything was perfectly fine. It was just a sloppy machine shot. And um, you can also see like when you get the, if you look at the inside of the charge pipe, you'll see a bunch of sanding marks and everything from them trying to clean up the, the dirty wells on the inside. Um, that's probably, you know, they can probably just machine away the proper fitment. So I had to get my pipe replaced twice by, H by VRSF because of the flange fitment. But the third one that they sent me was perfect, and it's still running to this day, two years strong. So it's a hit or miss. But for me, um, I also you know want to represent my brand, obviously. So on my car, I will be putting these everywhere. Um, my boy Josh over here, he came from New York. He's getting these installed. I just got these, and he was the first one to hit me up that he wants them. So that's love, baby. So yeah, we're gonna be installing these. I'm gonna show you guys what we do to prep everything and get it welded. But let me just put it back for you guys so you can see how easy it is. It's going to be a little hard because, you know, I'm trying to do everything by myself and recording at the same time, but it's not difficult. 
So when you put these together, that black ring is supposed to see it inside. And this clamp also allows from the pipe from sliding out. So that's what prevents it from a boost leak. And then you just clamp it shut, just like that. You put your pin, you push your detents in, and that's it. You have a 100% sealed clamp. So like I said, it does allow movement. Your pipes can still move while the engine moves under load and you won't have a boost leak because the clamp pulled the O-ring directly inside that seal. So let's start taking apart uh, the charge pipe and the throttle body. All right, you guys, so as you've seen, we got the charge pipe and the throttle body taken out. So before we even touch the charge pipe, um, it is a little bit of a mess because, here, actually, I'll show it to you guys. So the charge pipe, like I said, sometimes these things are a hit or miss with the, with the flange and everything, with the fitment issues. So my boy, John, he actually had an issue with his flange as well. And he was in a rush on trying to get the car and everything, you know, running so he can tune. So what he did was he actually just chopped this the, that flange off and he and he put that, that silicone coupler on there and it held, but it pops off every now and then because it uses the worm clamps. If he would have used T-bolt clamps and put a little bit of lip here, then maybe that's a different story. But as you can see, here's, here's life proof that those flanges sometimes are hit or miss. So um, this one we're gonna have to clean up and put the flange on, put the flange in there, just clean it up a little bit. So we're gonna put this one to the side and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start prepping the throttle body um, so we can actually weld on it. So the main body of the throttle body is aluminum. Um, I'm not sure if maybe this is painted. It kind of looks like it's painted. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning and prep work, but the gears and everything and the plastic cover and everything, this some of this stuff is gonna have to get removed. Um, the reason is because aluminum is very, very hot when you weld it, it heats up very, very quick. And also it's gonna give us a little bit more access in this area right here to throw a nice bead down there. So what we're gonna do is um, around this plastic, you have these clips. So I already removed some of them. So you know, you don't watch me pulling out six clips. There's only gonna be two. So all it is, is you get yourself a fly head screwdriver, stick it underneath and just twist it, hold it so it doesn't go flying and you lose them. Same thing over here. It's super easy to take them out, but just be careful. Um, you don't want to break them or lose them. So now the plastic body should be able to remove. So you got to be careful how you take this out too. Don't hit it or anything. Just wiggle her up and down. The reason is, is there's the motor inside. The motor is this piece right here. The motor sits inside the frame. It acts as a heat sink. So now the way that this connects with the, the pins for your connector is you have two pins right here and that's what powers your motor on the plastic cover you have the two um, connection pins so that's why you don't want to hit it because then you'll break your pins and now you have to buy a new new throttle body which they're not cheap just wiggle her up and down and the connections will come loose so now my plastic cover is safe um you don't want to weld with that one on because it does have the copper windings and everything built into the plastic so you don't want to melt anything by accident and then it will never work um, as far as the throttle body, here's what it looks like on the inside, your gears. So we're going to remove our big gear in the middle. It's just, it just slides up. You don't have to worry about anything moving out of position because it has, it's already spring loaded and it's already into position. The only thing is when you go to put this bad boy back on, you might just have to give this one a little turn and you see how easily she fell in. That's all it takes. So we're gonna put these to the side, don't lose anything. Um, the motor, you can you can take it out if you want, but it won't really do anything because the motor is you know, steel and encased in aluminum and everything. This is the one you wanna watch out for. Um, I'll highly suggest when you're welding it, don't try to weld the whole thing in one shot. Take, you know, take times, do like an inch weld over here, especially in the gear side, and just let it cool down. Then you can continue doing the welds. If you're welding anywhere close to this gear, just, Keep the welds to a minimum, let it cool down in periods of time, and you should be all right. Um, the rest of it is all aluminum, it's all metal, 
um, we are going to remove the throttle body gasket so we don't melt that as well we don't have a replacement unfortunately we're going to put that to the side so now our valve body our throttle body sorry our throttle body should be ready to weld so what we're going to actually do is we're going to trim this down a little bit we're probably going to trim it down to maybe up here around this corner um, we're going to get rid of this about half inch whatever it is we're gonna get rid of this half inch that way our throttle body is not sticking out so far because our clamp is going to add a good amount um we'll probably even you know cut back even further we'll probably just cut this whole lip off and just use that inner race so it can sit inside the lip um just keep in mind you don't want to cut too far where you can't get your torch in there and then you can no longer get a weld so just be be very careful on how far you cut it back unfortunately i am at home right now so i don't really have the proper tools to cut it um if i was able if i had more time with this then i would put this on the lathe and then i'll shave it down real nicely i'll make the lip where this sits on there perfectly and then i'll be able to get a nice clean weld but unfortunately the customer wants the car back the same day so we're just gonna try to do our best with a grinder and flap wheels so that's how you prep the throttle body that's how you take it off you can clean this grease it up whatever if you guys ever have issues in the future with it um just use dielectric grease so you don't short out your pins but other than that put you guys on time lapse let's start cleaning and let's get it welded all right you guys so it was a very scary moment so just take your time with her you don't want to mess it up and have to buy a whole new throttle body so the lip is cut off and um just so you guys know this is the new iphone 15 pro max so i made an investment so i can get you guys better quality videos and that way you guys can see more in depth so if you guys could please hit me with that like and subscribe i appreciate it i'm trying to do all these investments to get you guys the best quality videos and diys for you guys anyways back to the project so what we did was we cut off our top flange so unfortunately the grinder does not reach on this side because then you have the risk of nicking your your flange on where the plastic covers so what I do is just cut off as much as I can without the cutoff wheel hitting my flange. And then you can just wiggle this off until it cracks off. And then you can hit the flap, the cutoff wheel on the inside of the flange. Just give yourself enough, like a little groove. And you should just be able to crack it loose with your fingers as you guys saw in the time lapse. So once you guys have all that, you're good to go. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to grab ourselves a little flap wheel. We're going to clean up it, make sure it's all nice and smooth. So when we put our flange on there, we have a nice clean mating surface to weld on. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up and then let's get the flange welded on. All right guys, so we're just gonna use a regular aluminum oxide flap wheel because the ceramic ones are too aggressive for aluminum. So. so all we're doing is we're just trying to flatten it up so that way our flange sits on there real nicely. So as you can see, there's gaps and everything from the flap wheel or the cutoff wheel, sorry. That's why I said if, if I had my time with this, I would put this on the on the lathe and I'll have it cut down real nicely. But you can still get the same the same outcome using the stuff as long as you just take your time. So we're just gonna clean up that lip up there.
Alright. So now that little lip is cut off. So the reason I left that little lip on there is so when I cut off when I was cutting off that other flange, I didn't cut too deep into this one. I want this lip right here. So now I'll have that nice little edge right there for some aluminum welds to build up on. So it's gonna be perfect all around. So now what we gotta do is just clean off the edge because it looks like there's dirt and grease and everything on there. So you can either use a um, a stainless steel, you have to use stainless steel because you don't wanna use steel and then put all that dirty steel inside um, embedded into the aluminum. So use a stainless steel brush. You can either use this and just brush one way, just clean it up. But I buy these um, stainless wire wheels. So I'm gonna put this on my die grinder. We're gonna clean it up real good. So we'll put you guys on time lapse for that. All right, you guys, so the edge is cleaned up real nicely. Um, most of my welds are going to be sitting on top of this flange, but you always want to clean up everything. Aluminum does not like to weld dirty, and it does not like to weld cold. So get it as clean as possible. Um, all we did so far was just a stainless steel wire wheel. Next, we're going to be acetone and wiping it down really good. Um, I also have my Harbor Freight stand here. It's modified a little bit with the longer plates. We're just going to sit this in there like that, and we're going to clamp it on the sides. That's going to prevent from your welding table from arcing or anywhere on down here. I mean, like it's an easy fix if you have arcs, you just take a little bit of sandpaper and clean it up, but we want to prevent all that. So if you have a nice solid bite on the sides, then it's a lot better. Um, for the future, I will be offering this for, for customers if you guys are interested. Um, I'll make a whole fixture and everything. That way it just sits inside and I can bolt it down and prevent arcing. So she's bolted down. I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit so she doesn't move on me. And then we're gonna grab a rag with some acetone and then we're just gonna clean around our flange. You're gonna clean around the throttle body flange and you're also gonna clean the flange you're gonna be welding on. So microfiber towel. I have acetone inside my alcohol bottle. Wipe everything down really good. I forgot to mention also, if you guys are interested in, in supporting Frenchy Fab and interested in the new HD style clamps, um, give me a follow on Instagram at Frenchy underscore Fab. Um, and just send me a DM. I have two and a half inch available for like regular intercooler piping. And I have three inch available if you guys are interested in doing this HD throttle body conversion yourselves. Or if you have a buddy that welds locally, um, he can do it for you. Just purchase the flange. Um, two and a half inch flanges are $35. Um, the three inch flanges are $45. Um, both available in black and red. Um, maybe if other colors are being asked for. Maybe I'll offer different colors in the future, but I know those two colors are the most popular out there. That's why it's very important to clean your aluminum. Um, I know most of the dirt came from a dirty throttle body, but still. So now what you're gonna do is just turn it to the other side, get a nice clean side of your rag and continue cleaning. That side's nice and clean. So that one's ready to weld. We're gonna go onto the throttle body one more time. Just make sure everything's absolutely clean. Just a little bit of dirt. Um, that's not too bad though. So we are ready to clean. We are ready to weld. I'll clamp this down. All right, so now with my clean flange, we're gonna put it on. Um, please be careful how you weld these. Remember your overing side has to stick up. You're not welding the overing side, you're welding the flange side, this side. You don't wanna accidentally weld the wrong side and now you need a whole new HD clamp, unfortunately. So all we're gonna do is just even it out onto the throttle body. Looks pretty good there. So now let me get the welder set up and everything. We'll throw some tack welds to hold it in place. All right, you guys. So hopefully you guys can hear me with the welding fan up in the background. She 
is loud as hell. So we're gonna be changing over our gas lens. So for stainless steel and titanium and everything, I like to use the Fioric BBWs. Absolutely the best cup in the game. Um, for those of you just starting into TIG welding and everything, just stick with these um, regular consumables. Once you start get, learning to do your dabs and everything, then you can switch over to one of these because these are very expensive to, to mess up if you don't know what you're doing. So to weld aluminum, I like to use the number eight cup. This one's obviously don't use and abuse, but they still work great. Um, I still use the Fiora gas lens in the back. I'm gonna put this bad boy on. Um, for my gas flow rate, I usually weld between 15 to 20. I have it set on 20 because we're doing, you know, a high quality project right now. It's a valve body, throttle body, whatever you wanna call it. For your tungsten, I already have a nice sharp tip um, with a blunt tip. Where I do a nice little stick out. Um, the further you stick out, you probably want to turn up your argon a little bit. You don't want to stick out too far on these. On a regular, on a big gas lens like this, you can stick out pretty, pretty far. So, for welding aluminum, consumables. All right, you guys. So, torch is all set up. Um, the next thing is you have to preheat your aluminum. So, aluminum does not like to weld cold. You also have to outgas all the moisture that's inside of it so grab yourself a little torch and you just want to heat up the aluminum and you'll start to see the moisture and everything cook out of it so you don't want to go crazy hot with it because remember you don't want to melt your gears so all I'm going to do is just preheater so I can put some tacks in place and that way it holds my flange in the position that I want it All right guys, so she's cooled down. I have a little metal fan that I just set it on. Let it cool down, it takes about like two minutes. So she's still a little warm. You want it to be a little warm because remember aluminum does not like to weld cold. So let's keep her going. Actually, you know what? 
Let's clean off that soot a little bit so we can have a nice fresh start again. With aluminum, you want to brush one way. So if you guys notice, I'm brushing to the right like this. So throttle bodies are welded, all cooled down. Welds are in tube too bad. You know, especially I'm still learning this aluminum stuff. And for a Harbor Freight welder, I think she's pretty good. So no bubbles or anything on the inside, so a nice clean weld. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go install this into the car and then get our fitment for our charge pipe. I never let the comparison get to me. I just remember the promises meant for me. I know the enemy and that he sent for me. I keep the blood of the lemons, my centerpiece. I cannot trust in no crystals or energy. Look at the chemistry, it do not even mix chemically. Most of the tricks they be gimmicks, they mimic the truth. It's poison and we got the remedy. Uh, there is a bomb, apply it to fire. Alright, you guys, so in the time lapse, I know it was a little quick. I apologize, I'm trying to make this video not too, too long. But I also wanted to be informative as possible. So. We got the flange and everything cut to the way we want it. The proper length. Um, he already had it shaved off before, so all we do is just turn it down back a little bit. Because remember, you are adding maybe two inches of material. So you do have to remember to acquire for that space. So now that's how the flange is going to sit. Let me get you guys this close up. So now we're just gonna do is tack weld it. Then we're gonna clean it up really well because this paint's gonna give me a hard time with the acetone, it's gonna wanna eat it. So we're just gonna tack it, clean up around the flange where the weld's gonna go, and then we'll start welding away. It's what you could do when you start to believe. Take fear and you cast it inside of the sea. A hundred percent out of me, cause he gave it all on the T when he let it bleed. So what is you saying to me? You just insecure secure about the love that turned me to a beast. I take a step and I ain't turning back. He made me first cause I know that I'm last. I ain't got time for no thing in the past. Learn from it first and then I react. Hands off me, don't hold me. Get it jumping like a trampoline. All truth ain't no trolling. We in good hands, no folding. They say you ain't about it. Tell them that you finna make it, but they doubt. It. But God did it. But you rose like the flower. Tell me what it's like to live with superpowers. I don't know, but I'm a kid. 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 I just know that I'm a kid. 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 I'm a kid
Why do they talk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they walk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they act like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they rap like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Chains don't change like it used to. Who runs the roost round here? The coot's gone clear. Got the heart from the base to the snare, but the word is what's keeping them here. Word to my peers. The work don't stop till the top. Think it's resting, but we're not. I spread the message and it's love. I get the S and the P and the R from above. I see the restless with the keys and the palm for the bump. A bit of grinding up the herb is what I'm on. Shouts go out to mums. This one is the icy one. Go get the long johns. 50 Pret in London, if it's on, then I'm on. I know they feel it when I spit, it's like the Missy song. Shut your noise. Silence when I run the voice. Yes. All right, you guys, so charge pipe is in roughly. So as you can see, they're both welded. So now I'm just going to fit it up, and then we'll see what she looks like. All right, guys, so hopefully you can hear me with the wind and everything going out in the background. My boy John over there, he's taking out the turbo. Um, we're going to be welding the flange on there. I'm not going to capture that on video just because I don't want this video to be too long and, you know, just encourage people from watching the video. <clears throat> but I will show the aftermath of what it looks like. Now we're getting ready to put it all back together. So you're gonna get your O-rings. The O-rings do have a light film of oil. Uh, it would be better if you put something on it. Okay. Like I said, it's just as easy as just like that. So we're gonna put our O-ring on our charge pipe flange. We're also gonna put the O-ring onto the throttle body flange. Let me get you guys in a little bit closer. Hopefully that's good for you guys. All right. So that bad boy is placed on. Then we are going to put our silicone coupler to the pipe. Now eventually we are going to convert everything to the HD style clamps. Um, just wait till the end of the video, I have some news for you guys and then you'll see why. map sensor back on that's connected so now you're gonna grab your sleeve make sure it's clean from any debris when you put it on you want to be gentle with it so you don't nick the o-rings while you're trying to push this on you want to turn it at the same time It's going to be a very tight fit, so you're going to have to fight it. Once you have that placed, you can go ahead and grab your, your clamp. Now my hands are a little greasy, but get your clamp. You're going to go around. <clears throat> and 
sure she's fully seated, doesn't want to come off. And that's it. So that's the end result. The valve body is, or the throttle body, sorry. I don't know why I keep saying valve body. The throttle body is officially 100% converted over to HD clamp. It's a little dirty for my fingerprints. Moves freely. You have the wiggle room of the pipe, but you can be 100% sure that she's gonna seal. So, that's that. So now we're gonna weld the clamp over here onto the turbo side. So when we're done welding that and everything's put back together, we'll come back and we'll show you the rest and then we'll go for a joy ride. Alright guys, so update, uh, we made a new new hot side charge pipe because the original one that he had, he had this piece of straight pipe and um, it didn't fit very well and this was just for his boost reference. So it didn't fit very well, so what we did was we put a, a new 45 inch pipe in there and then we welded the flange on the turbo. We also have the new, the new flange welded on, uh, perfect fit, so we're going to bolt that on with the new clamp. Oh, update also, he changed his mind so he doesn't want the black clamps. So we changed them over to the red clamps. It only took two seconds to change the clamps out. So that's the beauty of them. So now you guys get to see what the red ones look like once this camera starts to focus because there's a lot of shit going on. So, yep. So we did HD clamp on throttle body to charge pipe and HD clamp from turbo to hot side charge pipe. And then in the future, um, like I said, wait till the end of the video and I'll give you the news. Um, we're gonna take that everything else and it's all gonna be 100% HD clamps. So let's finish putting that bad boy together. All right, you guys, so unfortunately, we're having a real hard time getting this clamp on there. Um, we're probably gonna have to move that flange a little bit lower because it's getting caught on the side of the head where the valve cover is at. And the angles of the pipe, it's super weird. So we had to hammer the back because it's hitting the wastegate. So it's already dark outside and we're trying to work on a Milwaukee light. So we're gonna call it for the day because he does have to drive back to New York. So we're gonna put the old pipe back on. I'm gonna work on some pie cuts and then we're gonna get this fixed correctly. But for the meantime, we did finish the throttle body conversion. She does have the flanges, but fortunately we just weren't able to get this pipe on. So we're gonna put the, the old pipe that he had back on and then we'll go for a test ride, get you guys some sound clips and then we're gonna end this video. Fuck that, I lied to you guys. We got that clamp on baby. Yes, sir. I wasn't gonna be able to sleep tonight if we wasn't yeah, gonna get it. Yeah, my boy didn't give up. So, he's the best. We had to remake a whole new charge pipe. It took two two pie cuts out there, and then the the flange. But we finally got her. She's all put back together. So now, he's putting the the T bolt clamp to the intercooler down there, and then we're just gonna fix up all the the wastegate hoses and all, and all that stuff, the plumbing, um, put everything back together, and we're gonna do a cold start and then test rides. Now. We're gonna go for test runs. Alright guys, so officially cold start.
six HP twenty eight. Oh man, <laughs> she's missing gears. It's time to upgrade. Too much power for that stock twenty one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Probably making a good maybe six hundred. Uh, I, I would say high four. How many pounds? Fourteen pounds. Oh, fourteen pounds. Uh, 14, 15 pounds. No I thought you were around mine. No, no, no. All right, you guys, so we at the studio right now, as you can see. Um, so that's gonna be the end of this video. So, like I said, we did the throttle body conversion and we did um, just a turbo housing conversion. Um, we wanted to do more, like the, the intercooler and all that stuff. But unfortunately, we didn't have enough time. As you can see, it got dark already. But um, the news that I was holding on for you guys is I am getting my own shop now. So I'm gonna be building a 30 by 30 pole barn in my backyard. So that's gonna allow me to bring in a lift and I'll be able to do a lot more work, um, a lot easier work. So when I get that in, he's gonna be coming back and we're gonna be doing the rest of the HD clamps. But um, I appreciate you guys for sticking around. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope it encourages you guys to try it yourself. If you guys are interested in these clamps, I do have two and a half inch and three inch available. Um, if you're interested, just hit me up on Instagram, follow me at FrenchyFab. And um, yeah, so I'll see you guys on the next one.